Today, I'm going to show you the best pocket pen in the world, and that is the Pilot Elite 95S. So let's unbox this, and then I'll show you why I think it's the best in the world. All right, so it comes in this pretty standard Pilot box, same box they use for mid-tier pens like the 743, the 823, um, 742, Pilot 912, pretty typical pilot box for pilot fans out there. So cardboard box, plastic box on the inside. And then once you open this, you have the pen, ink cartridge, warranty card, and this authorized reseller card, which on my version, not stamped. So pretty standard. So let's get this out of the way and talk about the pen. So this is the Elite 95S. As you can see here, it has a 14 karat gold nib. This one is a medium. So why do I say this is the best pocket pen in the world? There's two reasons. The first is value, and the second is performance. So let's go through that one by one. Let's talk about value. So I'm not a big pocket pen type of guy, but I have a few. So the cheapest one is this Pilot Petite. It's $3, but it feels like a $3 pen. This is a pen I recommend to a lot of my friends who just want to try a good fountain pen, but it feels like a $3 pen and it's really uh, like a throwaway type of product. Then you have the Pilot Prera. The Prera is one of my favorite pens of all time. I think this is a tremendous value, uh, not for the US retail price, but you can easily find this online for under $30. And for that price point, I think this is the best pen you can buy. However, the Prera still uses Pilot's standard stainless steel nib. And because of that, it gives you a similar writing experience to something like a $10 Kakuna. So while I think this is a great pen and a great value, as you'll see in a, in a minute, I think the Elite has it beat. Didn't mean to make that rhyme, but anyway, $30 Pilot Pen. Um, the other Pilot Pen that's discontinued is, and <clears throat> I do have one lying around somewhere, the Stella 90S or Stargazer. That pen um, is about the same price as the, or was about the same price as the Elite. Um, and that one had a number three, 14 karat uh, gold nib. Um, I never liked that pen as much as the Prera. That one just, it didn't feel as balanced to me in the hand. So anyway, that's discontinued, so we don't need to talk about that one too much. The other pocket pen that's very familiar to a lot of people is the Kawago Sport. I have problems with this pen. Uh, I will admit it is a very cool design, iconic, it's different, people... Uh, think this looks cool. I always felt the plastic version felt very cheap. It feels just like very cheap materials. It doesn't feel extremely well built. Um, and even though this is not a particularly thin pen, I don't find the shape of the section for me personally to be very comfortable. And the nibs are mediocre at best. I don't think anyone will say that the Kaweco nibs are spectacular. They're just okay. My biggest issue with this pen is the price. The plastic version is sometimes north of $30 in, at which case I would argue, why not just get the Prera? The metal version, the brass, the aluminum, the steel, those are often north of $80 and at that point, why wouldn't you get the Elite? So, Elite in terms of value. The retail price of this pen in Japan is approximately 90 US dollars. In the US, this retails for, I think it's 144. However, if you look online, it's very easy to find this pen well under $100. This pen, for whatever reason, the price fluctuates um, on Amazon 
more than any pen I've ever seen. When I bought this particular pen, it was $72, then it was $120, then it was $90, then it went down to $69. But if you track it over time, it's very easy to get this under $100. And for that, compared to what else is on the market, I think it is a fantastic value. The build quality is really nice. The materials are very nice. It posts to become a full-size pen, like truly full-size pen. So if you take, for example, a um, Sailor 1911, you can see once it's posted, the Elite is actually a longer pen. So it becomes a full-size pen, extremely comfortable, and the best part is this beautiful 14 karat inlaid gold nib. So for, let's call it $85 to, to pick a, you know, a generous value, you, you can get it under 85, but let's say 85 as a generous value, you're getting a ton of pen for the money. So that's why I say it's a great value. Now, let's talk about performance. So to talk about performance, I need to bring a couple of other pens into the equation so you to explain why I think this is such a great performing pen. So the first pen I'll, I want to bring is that Sailor that I showed you earlier. This is a Sailor 1911 and this is a 14 karat, whoops, 14 karat fine. This pen is the epitome of a very firm nib. This feels like you're riding with a nail. So if that's your thing, this is a great pen. And I've always thought Sailor, the, especially the 14 karat nibs, they're, they're good workhorse pens. They're good daily riders, but they don't feel, to me, they don't feel that great. They don't offer you a very unique riding experience. So that's the Sailor. Into the pilot's range, this is a pilot vanishing point, or capless as it's called. And this is the firmest of <clears throat> pilot's nibs that I own. This is an 18 karat, um, and this is a medium, but this is a very firm riding nib from pilot. Then, as you go bigger in pilot's nibs, they become softer. So this is a pilot this is a number five sized 14 karat. And it's a little bit softer. I'm not sure if you can tell in the writing, this is a fine medium. But my point is, as you start to get bigger in the nibs, they tend to be softer. Until you get to some of the larger pilot nibs, like a number 15. This is a number 15, 14 karat fine. And this is much softer. So as you get more expensive into the pilot lineups, the nibs become softer, which is interesting because this pen is cheaper than this pen, but the nib feels much closer to this one. So I'll try to show you that here. So this is the Pilot Elite 95S. This is a medium. And I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but this, this nib is very soft. It's very, it has a nice bounce to it, and it feels much closer to the number 15 nib on the Pilot 823 than the number 5 nib or the nib in the pilot vanishing point and I think that has to do with the fact that this nib is actually it's quite large but it's also inlaid so there's not a, a piece of the pen sort of holding it in place from the top the nib just feels very soft uh, very smooth there's a nice bounce to it and it's just a very nice riding experience um, it's very very well tuned as you would expect from pilot 
And for that reason, um, I think it's, it's just such a great performer. So value and performance. That's why I think this is the best pen in the world. The other quick thing, best pocket pen in the world. The other thing um, to mention is this design has been around forever. If you just Google search vintage Japanese pocket pen, you'll see pens that look almost exactly like this from Pilot, Platinum, and Sailor. This was a very typical design. For whatever reason, Platinum and Sailor don't make these anymore, um, but Pilot still does. Um, those older pens, some had stainless steel nibs, some had gold nibs, some were 14K, some were 18K, but in general, the nibs were much smaller. So this is one of those areas where I think the modern version of the pen it has retained all of the cool features in terms of this friction fit cap, in terms of the design that turns it into a full size pen, in terms of the quality, but it's actually improved in the nib. Because I think this 14 karat, this gold, this huge inlaid gold nib is much nicer than what you got from the vintage pens. So even though I'm not a big pocket pen type of person, I don't typically use pocket pens day to day. I really, really do like this pen and it probably is the best pocket pen in the world. So, all right. Well, I hope that was fun and thank you for watching.